Hello, I'm Liz and this is Random Workings and welcome to our 30 minutes to do miniature painting series. So, last time we painted these three figures and by painted I mean we put purple on this one and we washed these finally. They look a mess. A because I may have done the knolling wrong and B because that's the point of the knoll oil. It's supposed to make them all dark and then you go in and you clean it up and make the areas you want bright, bright. So what we're going to do is going to put a second coat of purple on this person's face and then we're going to null the back three and maybe this person. Um, but this person, this one that I'm holding is going to be a brown skin tone with a shocking orange hair colour. Gold slate orange. Don't know which camera picks that up better, but we're going to try it. Now, where that's my base brush, don't need that. Don't need that one. Dip them all in water a bit. This is where I find out I didn't clean my brush well enough. Oh, it's just got a little stiff. It's just a little stiff, fortunately. I probably didn't clean it well enough. Knowing me, I probably left it like a fool. see check my brushes they're looking okay you know I purposely jumped over camera correction so I wouldn't have this problem right so let's see layer mask dry so since the last video I've actually seen a new video from Duncan Road Painting Academy which uh, I think is in the description along with a few others to some painters I've watched um, about face painting and in it it actually explains better to me how the two thin quartz things work. So I've been painting on my models a bit thick. Um, when I needed to make the wit uh, it much thinner. I've also probably put far too much paint on my actual, um, what's it called? Wet palette at a time, uh, which means thinning the paints is actually more of a chore. So I'm going to try and put another thin coat on this and hopefully my camera stays in focus. It's not on autofocus, but still. So the technique is thin paint. You basically thin the paint with liquid, uh, water. I think you can get other stuff, um, but basically you thin, thin the paint until it's almost translucent. And this gives you more control over the colouring. And also you will eventually get back to the colour you want um, through layering on the colour. Uh, and this can also be used for more advanced uh, colour based techniques um, such as skin tone so I'm going to try and make my uh, paints a bit thinner you won't notice at this stage because uh, well I've already sort of started but hopefully uh, on the next models like the squigs It'll be more obvious when I do the base coating. But yes, I found out that purple is the right colour under brown uh, and um, what was it? Pink under yellow. And this is slightly to do with uh, skin tones and the fact that underneath skin you've got like blues and, and reds and purples from where your veins and arteries are close to the surface. 
So by putting purple and stuff underneath, you're actually um, giving them more of a human-like appearance anyway. But also the purple does just work well with the brown and makes it pop. So I splash purple on that. I'm going to put this down here. Also, by not using as much paint, I might have I I won't waste as much paint. In theory, I really wish I had more paint slots. I'm using an old-fashioned paint pot that you might find in a school, which means it does have like little slots for putting on your brushes, but uh, there's only two of them. Also, another reason for thin having thin paints is then your brush cleans easier because there's less paint on it. Um, so I need the shared brush, which is the one I was worried about at the beginning. Nice and springy now. Uh, and I'm going to open the shade. I'm also going to start using a lid under it in case I ever decide to try and knock it. So I don't need this right now. I'm going to lather Nolan Oil. Which is the paint I've picked. I should I couldn't technically use a different colour. Um because this five seconds. Now this isn't all of them, but there's like a lot of different colours you can use, like uh flesh shade, which is a brown for more sort of coppery. Um I think I've got I actually have an orange here. Which is an orange wash, more for probably would have been better to use this on my yellows. I think it's actually a yellow wash. Did I get that one? Um, um Carabon Cris Crimson is a, a red shade, uh, probably best for blood. But there's all sorts of shades in there. I think there's a blue one back, back there. Uh, no Nile is the basic default black. Uh, which means it's probably the best one to use the first time I'm trying shades. Uh, is it Lonnie? Put in the shade. So I've said I've done these ones. So you, if I put one of the ones I haven't done forward, you can see the big difference in colour. I think, like I said, I might have done the Nolning wrong. Um, again, I think I'm. I I think what I did wrong here was a I had too much shade on my brush. And B, I think I actually took off the shade. So you are supposed to just put it on and leave it to look like a little wet. Um, because like I said, you can just sort it out. But I think my problem was I was pulling so much of it off that I was then actually spoiling the effect. So we're going to do this again. So sometimes people actually, um, so the original model, I think I'll put too much on there again. The original model in this case would have been this um, gold. And what some people do is, I'm going to do it here. You put like the shade on the model as it is. And what that does is it defines the lines, which you can then use to uh, pick out where the colours change over better. So I'm just going to take some of that paint back off. It hasn't exactly settled because it's not exactly based. But you can see how it brings out a bit more detail in the floor, uh, which might make it easier to paint, especially ones which are more complex and have a lot more uh, tiny bits on them. Just a dip. That is far too much. I'm going to have to come back to this shield and take off some. But yeah, I'm supposed to dampen it, not drown it, which is what I sort of did there. But yeah, like I said last time, you can just take your brush, put it next to an area, and it'll soak up the liquid. So number one, just put your brush there, and it'll soak it up big one on here and then I can just redistribute it 
I'm prepared for some of these to be bad. I only want to dip, I don't want to dip it all back. Just the areas where it's pooled far too much. Because I want it to be in the crevices, but not making a mess. So that'll be more pit to fix. And the whole point of shades is technically to make your life easier. I think you've got reverse paints. I'm not sure if the paint stash I've kidnapped has them in it. Um, but there's some paints called contrast paints, which sort of do shading at the same time as highlighting. Um, so it's a finished paint, I think. And what it does is it does like shade and it goes into the recesses and darkens but it also pit, uh, dries a little bit see-through which means if you've undercoated with your base colour half of the base comes through so it, so you need to pick your base colours a lot more uh, smartly I guess because obviously you don't want black underneath a base colour uh, where you want a light colour to come through. Or at least that's what my working theory is. I don't actually know, like I said, I haven't got any as far as I know. I can always try on a different model when I'm feeling a bit more confident in my skill. At the moment, I'm confident I'm just making a mess. So that's the whole point. To chill while making a mess. And once again, wish I had a separate desk to do this on. Because I'm slightly worried that I'm flicking paint all over my uh, work area. My work area, I just mean like my keyboard and my desk, which is not probably the easiest thing to clean paint off of. Even the acrylic kind. So, looking at it, aside from the yellow on the front, I think I've done a slightly better job. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. This is the problem I have, putting them down. They're quite big bases, which is nice. So I'm going to do two and then I'm going to look at my other one again. The one I'm actually painting stuff on. I did try to find myself a dry palette, which is uh, what you tend to use, I think, in water paints. Uh, although I think you can just use a tile. Um, or a nice flat surface. I could technically use the inside of my lid. Uh, but I don't have dropper bottles, uh, which means I'd probably end up spilling a lot more than I need. So for now, I'm just going to stick with dipping my brush into the paint and hoping I don't spill it all. I think I've darkened the back a bit too much. So I'm going, that's why I'm spinning the model quite a bit. Fortunately, if I've over liquefied it, it means there's more chance of me getting to the paint before it dries. Because obviously more paint equals longer drying period in theory.
I think this is got definitely going to be a I'll figure out in practice what the best amount is to put on the model and where I think making it an even core is going to be the thing that I'm going to struggle with the most to begin with. Because um, if you look at my original two, they is messy. And I don't know if that's just the way I applied it or the way the paint dries. Probably both. That's far too much. Oh well, I don't think I'll need to dip into the pot anymore. <laughs> I think there's enough on my model. Another reason I want to be careful is if I pull too much paint back off, it'll leave a different type of patch. If I put too much on, I can always take it off and put it back in the pot, I think. Don't tell anyone if I'm not supposed to do that. They're all accessories! This is the most likely time when I'm trying to put the paint back into the pot. Then I might need to spill it over. Because I am sort of pressing down on the pot and moving the brush in a direction. But that's why I've got it in the lid to try and stop it going everywhere. I'm also worried about going over areas that look dry um, because I'm actually technically putting another layer onto that zone, I think. It's the detailed areas that really pop once you've done this. Leave it to be slightly wet. Just not a zone of black. quite a little bit more. Just put it on areas like the fingers. Let it get into the grooves. But yeah, I wanted a dry palette because it's slightly easier to control how much paint is on my brush. to actually be at the front of the picture. Those are my currently highlighted ones. The last one, this one hasn't been done yet. You can see it makes uh, let's look at the leg making I think there's a bit too much on that like but it's fine it's fine it's fine it just sits in shade but it's like making uh Sir Knighton's pop he has a chain on doesn't he yeah like the chains that links in this one compared to the chain links here are much less defined close the oil 
clean the brush. Seeing as the pit's quite thin anyway, it shouldn't. Also, my wet palette is technically supposed to be really wet, and then the paper is supposed to take a while to go through. So, I think I'm gonna say the skin is done. So, I'm gonna do the orange on the hair first, just as a first layer, which I have shaken but I haven't put on my palette. So, it is open already. Nice orange to it. Looks a little gleepy mind. Let's put a little bit of that on there. Use the brush. Then get a bit of water and make sure it's thinned out to me. So again I'm probably over thinning my paints. Don't know. Remove excess. And then put this orange. Which is a little too thin, I think, like I said. Let's see, you can hardly tell that I'm putting orange on right now. I think I've over thinned it. That's fine. Over thin just means a few more layers. My brush hasn't quite got a point to it right now. It's fine. Bin paint at least means that the um, detail of the model should stay. Hopefully. So if I put that model just here. You know, just as I make out the orange hair. There's two flicks at the front actually, isn't there? Although I'm likely to colour them with purple. Uh, brown later. I hope the camera angle has improved things. I noticed I ended up cutting out for quite a bit last time. Possibly because my nose was bugging it. I really, like I said, because I've got to watch out for my monitors. There's going to have to be a bit of cleaning on this because I have to watch out for my monitors. Um, I am a bit more cautious about having the camera here. Um, Well, I think I have one last model to known before over one bit's long. Looks okay. Right, so we're going to null the one with the red blurry on their head. Which... 
I had to look for a second to see if I'd actually painted that. I have. Of course, it's the whole gold on gold problem, isn't it? easier to fix. It's easier to fix. Or it's easy enough to fix. Every mistake is a learning, which will help you reduce your mistakes in the future. Hopefully. If it doesn't, you didn't make a learning. Bad. need this one it's fine it's fine here there's probably an area you missed B you can just put it back in the pond I think these have stilettos uh, not stilettos wedges on their shoes and I don't know if that's on all of the models or just this one That's actually quite well timed. Almost. Uh, I'm just gonna get a little bit in here. B. 
Yeah, aside from the one who I'm working on the hair for. Um, they've all been numbed. So it's time to start highlighting. Which is where I take off some of the darkness. That has entangled my characters. But you can see the chain is much more poppy now. On this model. Um, but as you heard, that was the 30 minute timer, which is always a pain. I'm always at that stage where I want to do more. But that's good because it means I can get on with the next video. So, try and move back a bit, because otherwise I'm going to have to mess with the uh, ta the uh, screen a bit, and um, say thank you for sticking through to the end of this video. And if you like what you saw and want some more, why not hit the like button, maybe subscribe, and then check out one of the videos or playlists showing up on the screen. Or why not head over to the channel for even more options, and if you have subscribed, Hit the bell on this video or the channel page and get notified every time a new video goes live. But either way, it's bye for now and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye!